Hello everyone and thanks so much for joining me today as we talk about Alberta's hares and rabbits. My name is Katrina Terrell and I'm the Community Engagement Manager here at the Alberta Institute for Wildlife Conservation. Now today we're going to learn about the different species of hares and rabbits that call Alberta home as well as how they live and what we humans can do to actually help them survive in the wild. Now I'll just say to start that if you do have any questions please feel free to leave them in the comments or you can email me at education at AIWC.ca. Now let's get started, shall we? For those of you who are just joining us for one of our presentations, the Alberta Institute for Wildlife Conservation, or AIWC, is a wildlife rehabilitation center, and we're located just outside of Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Now as a wildlife rehabilitation center, we have three main jobs. We rescue wild animals in distress, and it can be up to 2,000 animals every year. We rehabilitate injured and orphaned wildlife. And once they are healthy enough and ready to go back to the wild, we release these animals to where they came from. We don't keep any of the animals as pets. They are all going back to where they belong. But one other thing that's very important to our mission is educating the public on wildlife issues. And this is because over 95% of our patients every year are coming in because of human caused issues, many of which are avoidable. So the more humans know, the fewer animals get injured in the first place. And that's why education is such a big focus for us. One of the animals that we get quite often are hares as well as a few rabbits. We actually had over 140 hares come through our doors in 2019. So this is a big deal for us. Now here in Alberta, we do have species of both hares and rabbits. And hares and rabbits are part of a family that's called the Leporidae. They're closely related to pikas, which you might find in the mountains, and then a little more distantly to rodents, such as mice and squirrels. Now in the Leporidae family, as I said, there's hares and there's rabbits. But what are the differences between the two? Well, hares tend to be larger, first of all. They can get up three kilograms in weight here in Alberta. They tend to have long pointed ears and extremely long back legs and feet. Hares are very fast. They tend to leap more than they hop. And they're also mostly solitary animals. You typically don't find too many hares all gathered in one place. Rabbits though, are a little bit different. They are smaller. They only weigh up to about 1.2 kilograms. They tend to have shorter, more rounded ears at the tips. And they also hop more than they leap. In addition, rabbits are a little bit more social, so you might see a few of them all together. Now, in Alberta in particular, we have three different species of leporids. We have two hares, and then we have one rabbit. And the most common hare that we have is the snowshoe hare. Being in a northern climate, snowshoe hares do really well here in Alberta. Now, snowshoe hares are a little bit different from other hares in that their ears are quite a bit shorter. But again, that's because they live in a more snowy environment where you really need to conserve your heat. They do still have those big back feet and legs and they definitely leap more than they hop. We also have our white-tailed prairie hares, which are a little bit misleadingly called jackrabbits commonly. However, they are not rabbits, they are actually hares. So lots of leaping, long pointed ears and not very social. The only true rabbit species we have in Alberta is this one here, the Nuttall's Cottontail Rabbit. And if you haven't seen one of these before, don't be too surprised. They're our least common Laporte. If you look at a map of our province here, I've got the areas that our different Laporids actually live in. Our snowshoe hare, none surprisingly, is the most common. Our white-tailed prairie hare tends to stay more in central Alberta and definitely prefers more urban areas over more wild spaces. And then our Nuttall's cottontail rabbit is only at the very southeastern corner of the province. This is because they tend to prefer really grasslands or shrubby areas, and so they like to stay around that part of southern Alberta. Now, one other big difference between our hares and our rabbits is their babies, because their babies look and behave very differently from each other. For instance, You've probably seen one of these guys around. These are our baby hares. They're independent almost from birth and they stay mostly by themselves. 
Our rabbits, however, are born with their eyes closed. They stay very close to their mother for the first couple months of their life, and they also stay very close to their siblings. Hares are a little bit unique in the animal world in that their mothers don't have a lot to do with them. A mother hare will scatter her babies around a given area and not come back for up to 12 hours at a time. Rabbit mothers, on the other hand, tend to stay very close to their babies because their babies are bl born blind and don't move very much. The reason hare mothers, on the other hand, don't stay with their babies is not because they're bad parents. It's because this is actually a way to protect the baby hares. For baby hare, they don't give off any scent, but the mother hare does. So predators such as foxes or coyotes, who hunt mainly using their sense of smell, are going to follow the mother hare's trail away from her babies. And as long as the babies stay hidden and quiet, won't even know they're there. Having no mother nearby and no scent means that these baby hares are well protected from their predators. We do have one other kind of rabbit in Alberta, but they're not wild. We actually have large populations of feral rabbits that live in larger cities. And feral rabbits have many different colors of fur. They're not just brown or white. They can be black, they can be orange, they can even be polka dotted. So if you see some of these animals wandering around your neighborhood, they are feral domestic rabbits. Their babies are also not independent, just like our other rabbit species, but as you can see again, very, very distinctive colors. The reason we have feral domestic rabbit populations in Calgary and other cities though, is a bit of a sad story. Unfortunately, these are all here because people have decided to abandon their pet rabbits. If you do get a pet rabbit, you should be aware that these are a 10 or more year commitment. And it is never ever acceptable to release an unwanted pet into the wild. You might think that they'd be able to survive, but our feral rabbits are not capable of surviving in Alberta climates nearly as well as our wild rabbits and hares are. And part of this is because they don't have the same adaptations that our native species do. They can't camouflage as well, and they also can't escape predators nearly as quickly. Now our hares and our rabbits are really excellent at camouflage, blending into their surroundings. Our hairs turn brown in the summertime and then grow a thick white winter coat to blend in more with the white surroundings in winter. Our rabbits, our Nuttles cottontail rabbit, doesn't change their fur color throughout the year, but because the areas they live in are very shrub dominated and they're small, they're able to hide just as well. Camouflage is perfect for fooling predators who hunt mainly by sight. So animals like owls or hawks are going to have a harder time finding our hares as long as they stay still. If you've ever seen a jackrabbit or a snowshoe hare in your town, you'll often notice that they don't move until you get right up close to them. And that is because they are camouflaging and relying on that camouflage until they have to get away from you. Now, even if you do manage to spot a camouflaged hare or rabbit, they also have speed that they can rely on to get away from you. And hares especially are really, really quick. In fact, our prairie hares or our jackrabbits have been known to sprint at speeds of up to 60 kilometers an hour. That's faster than the speed limits in most residential neighborhoods. Part of the reason they can do this is because of how they run. As you can see from this picture, what our jackrabbits will often do is throw their back legs in front and their hind legs behind, creating a tightly coiled spring which then allows them to leap extraordinarily far in a single bound. Now, even on three legs, this strategy is excellent. On three legs, hares can still outrun most of their predators. And at AIWC, when we get calls about three-legged hares, we often just say to leave them be. They're very capable of surviving on three legs. And in fact, it can be difficult for rescuers to even catch them in the first place. Now, all of this speed does take a lot of energy and to fuel their bodies, our hares and our rabbits need to eat a lot. But what kinds of things are they eating? Well, it changes depending on the season. In the summertime, our hares and our rabbits diet is mainly grass, 
along with other herbs or shrubs that they can find. So things like dandelions, or maybe the lettuce that is in your garden if it's not fenced off. However, in the winter time, these plants are mainly covered by snow or might have even died. So they can't really rely on that. So in winter time, their diet changes to 90% bark and the small woody shrubs. Baby hares and rabbits, of course, like all other mammals, drink milk. And at our center, we actually have to make special rabbit formula for our hares and our rabbit babies when they come in orphaned. We cannot feed them the same kind of milk that we humans drink because the nutrients are totally, totally different. So we have to make special rabbit milk for them. And in addition to milk, baby hares and adult hares as well eat something else. And fair warning, this is a little bit gross. Rabbits and hares are what we call coprophagic. And coprophagic means they eat their own poo. Yes, I know how that sounds, but it's really interesting. Our hares and our rabbits actually give off two different kinds of poop. The brown ones, the small round ones, we're used to seeing everywhere, they don't eat those. But they also poo a different kind, and it's a green pellet. This is full of undigested grasses and shrubs, and it's packed full of nutrients too. So the baby hares and rabbits will often eat their mother's poo, and then the mother poo will eat whatever they don't leave, that they don't eat, because they don't wanna leave those nutrients behind either. Now our hares are herbivores. However, there are a lot of carnivores that like to eat our natural hares and rabbits. So in nature, their predators that they have to watch out for are things like foxes, coyotes, bobcats, lynx, owls, hawks, even crows and ravens. And in Southern Alberta, our Nuttall's cottontail rabbit has to look after one other predator, and that is our rattlesnake. So yes, we do have rattlesnakes in Alberta, but again, Southern Alberta. And don't worry, you're much bigger than a rabbit is, so they are not going to go after you. However, unfortunately, with the arrival of lots and lots of humans to this part of the world, our native hares and rabbits have also had a lot more dangers coming up because of these humans. So roads and vehicles, of course, are a major concern. I'm sure many of us have actually seen a hare or a rabbit that has been hit by a car. And that's simply because hares and rabbits don't understand the concept of looking before crossing the road. They also encounter a lot of pet problems. And at AIWC, we get many, many baby hares every single year that have been caught by people's off-leash cats and dogs. Now, even if they don't get bit hard, this is still a concern because cat bites can get very infected very quickly and they're often fatal. So it's best if we can just avoid this situation in the first place. And then the final reason that we get a lot of baby hairs coming in is accidental kidnappings. And this unfortunately is done with the best of intentions. It's often when people see a baby hair by themselves and don't know that the baby hairs are independent and capable of surviving on their own. So they'll pick up that baby hair and take it home and try to feed it carrots. This is not an appropriate diet for a baby hair. And so it can often lead to the hairs becoming very sick or malnourished, and they can even pass away in care. So a few rules to remember when rescuing a baby hair. If you see a baby hair by itself, and it does not appear to be injured in any way, the best thing you can do for that baby is to just leave it there. Remember, the mother's only going to come back once every 12 hours. So if you see a baby hair by itself, don't panic, leave it there and the mother will come back for it. If, on the other hand, you see a baby hair that has blood on it or that your pet has brought to you, that's the time to start calling a wildlife rehabilitation center and potentially rescuing that baby hair. But we advise you to always call first before you bring a baby hair to our hospital or to a veterinary clinic. Now we've learned a lot about the different kinds of hares here in Alberta and what their challenges are, but I also wanna let you know there's lots we can do to help our hares and rabbits. First of all, just driving carefully and watching for hares, especially at nighttime, is a great way to make sure that we're not having too many get hit on the roads. Also, making sure you keep your hands and your food to yourself. 
Remember, our wild hares and rabbits don't eat the same things as pets. They're not going to need carrots. They are perfectly able to find their own food. So keep your own food for your, your own snacks instead. And make sure you keep your pets on a leash or inside at all times. If we can avoid our hares getting injured in the first place, it's much, much better for them. Finally, if you ever do see a hare or a rabbit that you're worried about, the best thing you can do before you do anything else is to call your local wildlife rehabilitation center. We'll give you advice on if that hare or rabbit actually needs to come in or if it's safe to leave that hare or rabbit outside and just monitor. Now, I want to thank everybody so much for joining us today for our hares and rabbits presentation. It is so important that everybody learn a little bit more about their local wildlife species. If you do have any questions, again, you can email me. Here is my email if you hadn't heard it before. And if you are willing to, and if you have some funds to spare, we would love to have your donations too to help support the wildlife we have in care right now. It does take us over $200 to rehabilitate a single baby hair. So any amount that you can donate would be hugely helpful. Thank you so much, everyone. And hopefully I will see you next time.